Hi Canadian friends and pilots in Canada. In today's video, we're going to look at the top instrument rating pilot exam questions that you can expect. These questions are current as of 2024, and I made this list for you to help you out in your pilot exam. All right, let's get right into it. All right, let's look at the first question. It's flight operations related. When flying a GPS overlay approach, the underlying nav aids must be operational before the start of the approach. The identity Morse code must be heard throughout the entire approach. Does not need to be operational, but if it's operational, it's in good airmanship to monitor it. Or must be fully operational at all times. And the answer is, the underlying nav aid when you're flying a GPS overlay approach does not need to be operational. But if it is operational, it's a good idea to monitor and listen to it. Next question is, what is the maximum holding speed at 5,000 feet above sea level. For this one, you have to look at the holding speeds as well as their altitudes. At or below 6,000 feet, it's 200 knots. Above 6,000 feet, including 14,000, it's 230. And above 14,000 feet, it's 265 knots. So I gave you 5,000 feet, which would fall into the at or below 6,000 feet category. And the answer is 200 knots of airspeed. The next question is, strong radar contours of a thunderstorm should be avoided by at least the further the better, but the answer choices we have are 3 nautical miles, 15 nautical miles, 20 nautical miles, and 5 nautical miles. And the answer is 20 nautical miles. What is the floor of the Arctic control area? So we have 270 and above, 290 to 410, flight level 180, or flight level 250. And the answer is flight level 270 and above. On the exam, they can ask you the floors of either the Arctic control area, the Northern control area, or the Southern control area. You have to know all three. What is the characteristics of rime ice? The thing with rime ice is that the liquid droplets are much smaller than clear ice. And because they're small, they do not have a chance to spread too far back. So the answer is small droplets with a low catch rate. Next question asks, what is the alternate IFR minima for when there's one precision approach available? All right, so for this one, you have to actually memorize the IFR alternate minima table in the Canada Air Pilot, but the answer is 602 or 301 above the height above threshold. You are presently flying an aircraft at 10,000 feet and air traffic control just cleared you to descend to 5,000 feet. You must either Descend if you're unsure there's no mountainous regions. Descend promptly when you acknowledge the clearance. Descend whenever you reach the top of descent point. And descend at the pilot's discretion. Well, when we look at this type of question, we want to eliminate the ones that do not make any sense. So when ATC gives you a clearance, they basically want you to descend as soon as possible. So we can eliminate the choice D at the pilot's discretion. Uh, we can eliminate choice C because whenever we reach the top of the descent point, again, that's your pilot's discretion. So the answer in this case is B, descend promptly when you acknowledge the clearance. You can always ignore the two choices right away and pick the one that makes the most sense. Next question is, when is the distance measuring equipment slant range error the greatest? Is it when it's low and close to the station? So when it's high and close to the station? Is it when it's low and far away from the station? Or is it when you're high and far away from the station? The answer is when you're high and closer to the station. Next, what is the meaning of the letter X in the instrument landing system approach chart? Does it mean it is out of order? Does it mean the localizer is more than three degrees from the center line? Is it an experimental localizer? Or does it mean that it's privately owned? All right, so the letter X or X-ray means that the localizer is more than three degrees from the center line. And finally, you're an aircraft flying at a true airspeed of 140 knots. What bank angle would produce a rate one turn? So let's look at some of the options we have here. To figure this one out, we have to do some math again. Use the angle of bank equals the true airspeed in knots divided by 10 plus seven. So if we take a true airspeed of 140 knots divided by 10 plus seven, we have 14 plus seven equals to 21 degrees of bank angle. All right, that's it for this lesson. 
This instrument rating exam is quite different from any other pilot exam we've written before. There's a lot of theory involved, you know, a lot of imagination, a lot of thinking that you need uh, on this exam. It's not just black and white where you memorize things. There's a lot of um, scenario-based type of questions you can expect on this exam. If you want my help, I've helped hundreds of pilots pass their pilot exams in Canada. You can check out the link in the description below, as well as I have a free instrument rating formula sheet that you can also download as well to help you on this exam. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.